Number 10, Roswell. The birth of the UAP phenomenon. Post-Cold War, 1945, the US's first nuclear explosion. 1946, the first underwater nuclear explosion. 1947, the first crash flying saucer. Local rancher Mac Brazel finds the wreckage on his property in Lincoln County, New Mexico. Sheriff Wilcox shows RAAF's commanding officer, Colonel Blanchard, the materials, and during the night, the Air Force combs the entirety of the property, apparently harboring two small injured alien bodies. Taking them then to Kirkland Air Force Base, New Mexico that night, the very next morning, the Roswell Air Force makes a statement claiming that they have recovered a crashed flying disc in local newspapers. Boom, history baby. A photograph of Jesse Marcel, the head intelligence officer who investigated and recovered some of the debris. The very next day, the army retracts their statement, however, and all of a sudden, a high altitude weather balloon, AKA, the birth of the conspiracy theory. Nuclear fission explosions, weather balloons, something's not adding up here. Number nine, the Washington flap. July 19th, 1952, air traffic controller at Washington National Airport spots seven slow moving objects on his radar, a fleet of flying saucers. Two F-94 interceptor jets take off and become scrambled as each of them approached, radar included. Seven days later, the UFOs are back over the nation's capital as two more jets scramble trying to chase it down. One of the pilots sees a bright light in the distance and decides to give it a chase. Quote, I tried to make contact with the bogeys below a thousand feet. I saw several bright lights. I was at max speed but even then I had no closing speed. I ceased chasing them because I saw no chance of overtaking them at all. Newspaper headlines around the US scream, quote, saucers swarm over capital, and quote, jets chase DC sky ghosts. Probably not a good idea to just fly over the capital without saying hello first. Number eight, Betty and Barney Hill. The first real documented UAP abduction case in history. Betty and Barney Hill, married couple, New Hampshire. We're driving home one night from a three day honeymoon when a light started following them in the sky. Pulling over after after minutes of tailing, Barney got out of the car and gazed into the sky. From this moment on, the couple say two hours were lost. Betty's dress ripped, Barney's shoes scuffled, and both their watches two hours behind. Thinking nothing of it, they both reached home confused. And after weeks of no sleep, the couple reached out to a psychic researcher who could help them. And under hypnosis, the couple made some terrifying claims. They both, on separate occasions, claimed that they were separately walked into a large metal disc by small gray beings and continued to operate and experiment on the couple on board. Blood taken, bodies examined, and both of them downloaded an understanding of a star system called Zeta Reticuli. The hill stuck to their story for the remainder of their lives and remains one of the first and crucial American accounts of alien abduction. Number seven, Area 51. This secret base in the Nevada desert acts as the US's military hub for spatial engineering, maybe even some reverse engineering. The area is named after the geological grid of the desert. Groom Lake, Dreamland, this place has tons of nicknames. The area gained notoriety in the early 90s when numerous claims that workers had worked on alien aircraft and even heard of harboring alien creatures underground. The entire premises is fenced off with signs saying no photography allowed use of deadly force is authorized that can't be good whatever they're hiding here it's mostly military. The base has been a testing facility for the Air Force and remains one of the most highly secured and secretive bases in America. Remember the 2019 Storm Area 51 movement? Yeah, no one got him. Even the famous Bob Lazar has claimed he was an employee here. What do you think? Number six, Travis Walton. The horrifying abduction of local Arizona forester Travis Walton. Some of us know the name from the movie Fire in the Sky based on this exact case and filmed in 1993. On November 5th, 1975, Walton and a number of others from the logging crew were working with timber in the Apache Sid Greaves National Forest. While riding in a truck with six of his coworkers, they allegedly encountered a saucer-shaped object hovering about 100 feet away, making a high-pitched buzz. Walton exited the truck and ran over curious. A beam of light then appeared from the craft and blasted him him unconscious. The other six men were terrified and drove away before returning moments later in a panic to a now vanished Travis. Walton claims that he woke up in a hospital room observed by three short bald creatures. He fought with them until a more human looking figure led him down another room where he then blacked out. Walton claimed that he remembers nothing else until he found himself awake walking along a highway five days later naked, clueless of what had just happened. It's terrifying. Number five, Rendlesham Forest, the Roswell of the UK. Boxing Day. 
1980, the forest lays between the military bases of Ben Waters and Woodbridge. 3 a.m., two military personnel, John Burroughs and Jim Penniston, respond to bright lights in the forest. The radio stopped working. There was a static feeling in the air and an odd, absolute silence. The closer the men got, the more they realized it wasn't ours. Penniston was drawn in and touched the craft, instantly electrocuting him and apparently downloading him with odd symbols and star system maps before the craft then blasted off. 24 hours after, the craft returned Turned, and Deputy Commander Charles Halt is now witness in the exact same spot. The trees, petrified. The ground, radioactive. And there are three large landing holes in the grass. Years later, Burroughs and Penniston still continuously ask the British government for their medical records from that night that they never received. Almost 32 years later and still nothing. Creepy. Number four, Zimbabwe children. In 1996, a mass sighting was witnessed by an entire school in broad daylight in Rua, Zimbabwe, Africa. More than 150 students and staff were present. There have been tons of documentaries surrounding this case. Face to face, arm's length with the craft and beings? The children, who are now mostly in their 30s and 40s, are still convinced. More than 100 students can still remember what they claim to be telepathic warnings from the creatures surrounding our use of technology and the hazards it has on our planet drawings, first-hand interviews, and the weirdest part, all the same story. Same description of the craft, same description of the beings. Director and writer James Fox documents this infamous interaction in his 2020 documentary called The Phenomenon. If you haven't seen this, check it out. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Number three, Skinwalker Ranch. 500 acres on this land in Ballard, Utah, the most bizarre spot on earth. Skinwalker, getting its name from the first Navajo people's word for an evil spirit that inhabits the human form. The reports start in the 30s with the Myers, then the Shermans in the 90s. Then, Robert Bigelow, creator of Bigelow Aerospace, purchases the ranch for the development of UAP and consciousness research with the Advanced Aerial Threat Identification Program, or also known as ATIP. Gifted a budget to conduct research, this is where it starts getting weird. 2013 UAP researcher Brandon Fugel then buys the ranch from Bigelow and History Channel's team of the Skinwalker Ranch series, an entirety of a crew of about 160 people remain there to this day, conducting experiments and living on the land. Some examples of reports are hundreds of unexpected explainable cow mutilations, flying discs, orbs, ghosts, Bigfoots, and of course, a giant pulsing magnetic signature buried under the mountain. That's horrifying. Number two, the O'Hare Airport. The O'Hare Airport incident happened at approximately 4.15 p.m. broad daylight on November 7th, 2006. Chicago O'Hare International Airport receives a report that a group of 12 airport employees were witnessing a metallic saucer-shaped craft hovering still over gate C-17. The object was spotted by a ramp employee first, then it was witnessed by pilots, then airline management, and numerous mechanics simultaneously. No air traffic controller saw the object on radar. Mm. A completely silent seven meter dark gray saucer sits. Several witnesses outside the airport also saw the object, ringing up local police and reporting numerous phone-ins describing a disc craft hovering over the airport for numerous minutes without moving. According to another witness, the object then shot straight up through the clouds at high velocity, leaving a clear blue hole in the clouds. According to the Chicago Tribune the next day, the disc was visible for over five minutes and was seen by dozens of airport personnel. And coming in at number one, we have the Tic Tac. November 14th, 2004, 100 miles southwest of San Diego, California, the USS Nimitz Carrier Strike Group, which included the nuclear-powered carrier and missile cruiser, the USS Princeton, were conducting a series of drills in the Persian Gulf. Around 2 p.m. Two F-A-18 Super Hornet fighter jets from the Nimitz received an unusual ask to help with a real-time world mission. The Princeton's radar, which had been picking up objects for several days. The Princeton's senior radar screen showed over a hundred UAPs in just that week alone buzzing the ships. When noticed one of the objects was flying about 50 meters above the water, Commander David Fravor and the Black Aces Squadron described it as about 40 feet long, shaped like a Tic Tac candy with zero means of propulsion. Fravor decided to intercept the object at this point and the object started copying the jet's maneuvers. Impossible by physics standards today. After engaging the UAPs, they vanished and the strike group remained active, confused, and awaiting disclosure. Yeah, I'd say this encounter is the absolute best proof we have to this day. Number 10, Titanic. <clears throat> I cannot conceive of any vital disaster happening to this vessel. Modern shipbuilding has gone beyond that. That was a quote from E.J. Smith. Who was that, you may ask? None other than the excellent Navy expert who was the captain of the Titanic. 
oof. It would be very funny if not so ironic. Or maybe that's where the humor is. Regardless, the Titanic was a headline in the news even before it got wet in the ocean. The largest luxurious vessel ever constructed until now, and it was unsinkable. Eh. I don't know about that. What modern times we live in where ships no longer sink? What modern times we live in where ships no longer sink? Well, if you've ever seen Leo smooch Kate Winslet in the back of your grandpa's car, then you know how well that went. The Titanic rests 13,000 feet below the ocean. Not too far from the rock bite. That's Newfoundland. Number nine, Chernobyl. If you've seen the HBO miniseries Chernobyl, then you have a very good understanding of just how terrifying this is. Chernobyl is the site of the Soviet nuclear power plant that in April of 1986 had a serious accident due to a flawed reactor design and staff that didn't really get the best training. The accident itself was explained really well in the show and at the trial that took place, but it resulted in a steam explosion and fires that released 5% of the radioactive core into the environment. The explosion ended two workers' lives with acute radiation poisoning affecting a confirmed 123 people and ending 28 of those people's lives as well. Around 5,000 cases of thyroid cancer with 15 fatal incidents were probably caused by the radioactive iodine fallout. Look, it was not good. It was scary. And what was potentially even scarier was the way people tried to cover it up. Number 8. Berlin Wall Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. For the younger audience that doesn't know, let me break it down for you. After World War II ended, relations between the West and the Soviet Union broke down to the point of global destruction. Germany, having lost to all parties during the war, got split up, capitalist and communist. Trouble is, people living on the capitalist side were just living better. So people began flocking over to the better side. The communist government decided to build a big, bad, gray, depressing wall monitored by guards with orders to open fire if someone tried getting across with the proper documentation or reasoning. This went on for a few decades until one day in 1990 when the border crossing's red tape was cut and the wall began to come down brick by brick. That must have been something to watch and I can imagine for those who got to witness it, they were glued to their television sets. Very cool. Cool history. Number 7. One Giant Leap As most humans know, we have gone to the moon. Unless you think it was faked, and in which case, please civilly discuss below. But after traveling 240,000 miles in 76 hours, Apollo 11, that's the 11th Apollo mission, entered into a lunar orbit on July 19th, 1969. On July 20th, 1969, two men, American astronauts Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin, touched down for the first time in the history of the Earth on the surface of our moon. And then six hours later, they left their craft and stepped out onto the surface. They left a plaque and some footprints, erected some flags, ran some tests, bada bing, bada boom, and then they hopped back in the craft, had a little sleep, and departed on July 21st at 1.54 p.m. Earth time. And we've been back five more times since. Number six, the Roswell incident. The Roswell incident used to be the biggest event to ever happen in New Mexico history. Now it's being shadowed by a bald chemistry teacher, his science enthusiastic student, and a slimy lawyer. Who would have known? Well, for the second most eventful uh, event to ever come out of New Mexico was the Roswell incident. A mysterious flying object, other known as a UFO, crashed into the desert. Naturally, in the 1940s era US military, they kept secrets, the same way your mom holds on to family tea. Seriously, ask her about that one family member. She's going to tell you something you don't want to know. This secrecy quickly spread rumors of it being an alien from outer space. Well, it wasn't until the 90s that this incident was officially declassified and declared to be nothing more than a weather balloon. Or at least that's what we were told. This didn't stop the town of Roswell, New Mexico, however, from adopting this alien rumor into the town's very fabric. To this day, the little green man can be found in Roswell as sort of a tourist attraction. Every town needs something. Mm, take me to your weeder. Take me to your weeder. <laughs> Number five, Private War Bear. It wasn't just members of the human species who took part in WW2. No, sir. Mules, dogs, pigeons, horses, bears. Bears? Soldiers in Poland had come across a bear cub on the side of the road whose mother had been unfortunately removed from this world by hunters. 
One of these soldiers decided he was going to raise the cub as his own and named him Wojtek. Wojtek was trained by this soldier and a civilian and eventually he was even enlisted in the Polish army so that he could legally come aboard a British transport ship. Fortunately, he didn't actually do any fighting, but he was given his own paybook, serial number, and the rank of private. He would bunk up with other soldiers, loved beer and cigarettes, and helped transport supplies including heavy boxes of ammunition. Nice. Number 4. Rough Riders Okay, think about the toughest guy you know. Maybe it's your dad, maybe it's your uncle, maybe it's you. Maybe it's me. No matter who it is, I bet they aren't as tough as Teddy Roosevelt, the 26th President of the United States. He was well known for being a man who enjoyed nature, the explorer's man if you will. Safari hunter, Nobel Peace Prize winner, soldier and a big booster for the national park system. The man did it all, but did you know that during a speech in 1912, President Roosevelt was shot? <gasps> Gasp. Now before I tell you what happened next, I want you to take a guess what happened next. Did he A drop to the ground and perish, or B the assassin was a lousy shot and missed giving the president a chance to return fire? What's your answer? Type down below. Well the answer was secret option C, I gotcha. He was shot and showed the crowd that he was and then he said I can no longer make a long speech because I have been shot where he then continued to deliver an 82 minute speech. What a man. Number 3. Pepsi Army Did you know that the company Pepsi actually had the world's sixth largest military for a brief moment in time? Ok, so basically what happened is that Pepsi realized that they were inferior to Coca Cola and so they installed AI into their Pepsi cans worldwide creating an autonomous army of soda cans. No, that's not what happened, you goof. Actually, in 1959, at an American exhibition, PepsiCo tried to prove the great concept of capitalism. Pepsi actually did a pretty good job. But the cash of the Soviet Union wasn't really accepted all over. So, instead, the Soviets traded submarines, military ships, and a lot of vodka for tons and tons and tons of Pepsi. Enough that Pepsi ranked 6th among the world's military powers until it sold all of that. Number 2 Emu War Australia, land of sun, beaches and spiders that got too buff. Too much for me. But today we're talking about my friends from down under. Shout out to the Aussies, Chetty loves you. But we gotta talk about the Emu War guys, what the heck was going on there? In a nutshell, emus were causing havoc in Australia's agriculture sector and destroying farms at an alarming rate. So the government said, Ron in, tight easy, get rid of the buggers. A couple of soldiers were given large automatic weapons to deal with the pests. Well, it didn't turn out very well as the emus just didn't seem to want to eat the bullets. Can you blame them? I can't. One Australian politician jested that the emus should be given medals for their bravery. In the end, the emus won. Number one. Free fallen. 50 years ago, on January 26, 1972, Vesna Volovi, a flight attendant from Serbia who worked for the Yugoslavian airline JAT, got on board JAT flight 367 to Copenhagen. Also on board that flight, unfortunately, was a device inside a briefcase that went boom over Czechoslovakia. While everyone else on board did not survive, Miss Volovic was stuck inside the shattered fuselage by a food cart as the plane and Vesna fell 33,000 feet. Thankfully, there were trees to break the fall and snow to cushion the landing near a small Czech village. But Vesna still suffered a skull fracture, broken legs, three broken vertebrae, she was temporarily paralyzed from the waist down, and put in a coma, leaving her with no memory of the flight or her descent. While there was some skepticism about the way the flight went down, she still received a Guinness World Record for the longest survived fall without a parachute. So that makes up for everything, right? Yeah. 